by the deputy minister said we have uh, uh, good news for you but i will tell you the story how we got to where we are and i want to uh, stand on existing protocol and acknowledge all our partners who are here the media for joining us this uh, afternoon we are here to talk about the end of the marble virus disease outbreak and we'll talk about the background how it was the outbreak response measure that were put in place uh, a bit of the survivor who recovered actions taken towards the post declaration conclusion and then we made a final declaration um, ladies and gentlemen on the 28th of june 2022 suspected viral hemorrhagic fever cases were notified to health authorities at the Ashanti Regional Health Directorate, that's in Kumasi. The first case presented to a health facility in Adansi North with symptoms onset on the 24th of June. On June, he arrived from the Western Region to Ashanti Region where he came to seek care. He sought care at the hospital on the 26th of June and died on the 27th of June, that the day after uh, reporting. A second case also came sought care at the same hospital. He came from the Bekwa Municipality as a, case, as a first case on the 28th of June, but also died on the same day. Blood samples were collected for both cases and sent to Noguchi Memorial Institute for Medical Research for testing. On the 1st of July, both cases tested positive for Marburg virus by PCR. Both samples were sent to the labs for additional labs in the in Dakar in Pasteur for quality assurance purposes. Because that was the very first time we had actually gotten Marburg in Ghana. The second case was not confirmed. Subsequent tests showed that it was negative, so that left us with one case at a time. The first case was a 26-year-old male resident in Adansi Kusa in the Dancy North region who presented to the health facility with a three-day history of illness. He had he was vomiting, he had bloody diarrhea, a history of fever, he was feeling cold, or general body aches, he was having pains on urination, bleeding from the nose and mouth and had reddish swollen eyes. These are all very clear signs of a hemorrhagic fever. Two more cases were confirmed after that, a 14-month-old boy and a 24-year-old woman. Both cases are related to the first case. The 14-month-old was a son, and the 24-year-old lady was the wife of the very first case who died. These cases affected three regions, Ashanti, Savannah, and Western Region. I'll take you through how it happened. If you look at the, the first slide, the case presented at Adansi, that's where Adansi, no, that's where we found the first case. But we realized that he was ill from Western Region, uh, precisely Pristia Huni Valley District, and moved to Ashanti for treatment. By the time the results came in on the first of July, the buried the body had been buried in Soratuna Kaaba, where the disease. Um, Hailed from. So within that period, that means that we had three regions where areas where we needed to focus on so, uh, Savannah, Savatumba, and the Savannah region, Shanti, and Western region, and specifically the district I mentioned. So if you look at um, Solatuna Kaaba, apart from the further part where the burial was took place, we had two cases were diagnosed from there, and that's where the burial also took place for two cases. We also have the Adansi uh, North District uh, as the place of residence for the case one who had returned from Western Region. And I talked about the fact that we, course, we had the initial sec second case from um, Bokwai Municipality. We had contacts. Despite the fact that we were attested negative and the quality assurance, we continue following their contacts, and that's why they still remain. Uh, on the list to be sure that we don't miss anything. 
So the, the, the Western region is where the first kids actually working there as a farmer. And, um, and that's where he fell ill. So that became a very crucial point for us uh, as, a, as part of our response because we suspect that that's where the virus must have been coming from. But when we visited, we also realized that we also had all the ingredients of uh, the virus. We have the bats were there, there were old caves, and some mining activities going place. So that meant that it was a very uh, fertile ground for such things to take place. And there were other migrants who had come in there working there. So these were all areas that created a challenge. So how did we, how many response measures did we take place? Once, as soon as we uh, found out that we had that uh, challenge, uh, we issued alerts to all our health facilities, including teaching hospital that we have identified such a case just to create the awareness and people to be on alert to look out for them. You also had to activate the national, regional, and district public health emergency structures. This is not limited to only the place. This is a nationwide response. So we just uh, alerted all of them. We also deployment, we have a deployment of national, regional, and district public health emergency response teams. These are teams that are already there, but we only have to deploy them when there are cases there. We also initiate our risk communication and community engagement about uh, Mabe virus across the country, uh, not just in the district. And we also initiated a nationwide sensitization of all clinicians, that is doctors, health workers who are uh, seeing cases. We also have specific interventions for the, the affected regions and districts. And this included activation of the regional public health emergency management committees, Boashanti, uh, Savannah, and Western, uh, more, more of an enhanced acti uh, activation. Activation of the District Public Health Emergency Management Committee in the affected districts, that is Adansi North, Bekwai Municipality, Sola Tuna Kaba, and Pristia Huni Valley. For these districts, we also have further to do contact identification. So we are tracing and following up contacts. In all, we had about 198 contacts, uh, 50 in Ashanti. 84 in West, 64 in Western, and uh, out of that we had about 28 were health workers. And uh, the most important information here is that when we have such cases, those who are at higher risk are the health workers, the first responders who are likely to come in. Fortunately, nobody developed the disease, and even though we followed them all for 42 days. Despite the fact that the, the official recommendation is 21 working days to make assurance of sure, we followed all our contacts for two, twice the incubation period, which is 42 days. We also have training and deployment of community-based surveillance volunteers to go into the communities and look for what is happening, provide education, and also report anything unusual that they see in the communities. We also had the area of case management. Uh, that is those who manage the cases. First was the clinical. They went on to review clinical records review of the clinical uh, or the facilities in the locality that we are working in. So for example, in case someone may have missed something, you go into the records and see all the cases, see what were the symptoms in case someone missed it so that we can follow up. We also had provision of psychosocial support for the affected individuals, their families, and their health workers. I mean, if you just even hear that you've been in contact of a case of Marburg viral disease, it's uh, something that requires some psychological support. We did it for the health workers, the families, everybody was done, but including those who were positive. We activated existing treatment centers, specifically in the regions where we had Kizar, Sola, Tuna, Savannah, Ashanti, and Western region. And mobilized logistics to, in terms of PPE, etc., if they were need to, to use them. So we had a single surviving uh, individual. A, bit, a brief about her is that she was a 24 year old 
female related to both them. The investigator, the case, the first case, and the person who died. Uh, is a, uh, and a child. That is her child, her son. She was tested as a close contact to the index case and the child. She was initially asymptomatic at the time that we took the sample, but was positive, even though it was positive on the 19th of July, 2022. She was isolated following the positive test results, and all her contacts were identified and followed up. She later developed mild symptoms whilst in isolation, and so we moved her to a designated um, government treatment center in the Western region. Three weeks subsequent to that, we had two tests done on the 3rd and the 5th as per protocol. On the 3rd of August, it was negative. A repeat 48 hours later, still turned negative, and so she was discharged on the 5th of August as 2022. That is my bag free. So what have you done? That was the very last case, and subsequent no other or none of the contacts had developed anything that required anything to worry about. So the the WHO policy is that the WHO recommends 42 days following the negative PCR test result at a time for declaration of the outbreak of that the outbreak is over. In the absence of new cases supported by evidence of active surveillance and of for malware virus disease. So basically that is the next policy that we are trying to work on. First is we're going to start accounting and we're going to enhance surveillance to make sure that we don't miss any case and then we can now declare the, uh, the outbreak over. So for the discharge of a single case. In the absence of any new case, the countdown for this declaration started on the 6th of August, uh, 2022. We had in, implemented additional measures as part of the action uh, to, uh, to culminate the final declaration of the outbreak. And these were included enhanced surveillance and active case search. We're not just waiting, counting. We're actually working and making sure that we are seeing, we are watching, looking out for any case. We all tested all suspected cases, and I'll give you the details later. We also enhanced our risk communication and community engagement to ensure that we are able to protect people and also identify cases. And we have a nationwide sense, continue the nationwide sensitization of clinicians and healthcare workers across. From the 6th of August, um, 2022, to as a way of confirming that they were active stage, we had actually 20 suspected cases who all tested negative for the virus. So that was a real indication that countrywide they were being tested. We also had some suspected cases reported in 15 regions, out of 16 regions, showing that the activation of the surveillance system was working and everybody was actually looking out for these cases but they all tested negative out of the 91 and post 5th of august we still found about 20 more cases that we had to test and they all tested negative this and gentlemen in conclusion ghana's um, first outbreak of malware virus disease was rapidly detected communicated and contain, and I'm sure the communication took place from here with a press briefing, etc., to alert the world we didn't hide it. Appropriate public health response measures were implemented with support from our partners, and we must acknowledge all of them. So, <clears throat> having a social, call, ecological, and animal studies with wildlife division to map out risk across the country. What we are looking at is that let's look at risk mapping. Where in this country? is Marburg disease at a uh, highest risk. So there's a study going to see maybe this spot and that these are areas we need to continue watching. And so we are not just living there, we are making sure that we are more better prepared and also prevent any further outbreak. Our resilience disease surveillance system has once again demonstrated the existing capacity to detect 
and engender appropriate response actions despite the fact that we are dealing with other outbreaks yellow fever monkeypox um, measles and still with COVID. Um, so the health service together with our partners under the leadership of the ministry of health and all stakeholders will continue to work towards achieving the public health security in ghana So, on this day, what's today's date? 16th of September, I, Dr. Patrick Kumabwaji, the Director General of the Ghana Health Service, on behalf of the Minister for Health, Honorable Koku Ajimamenu, together with our partners, do hereby state that appropriate outbreak response actions to Malbec virus disease has been implemented during the 42 days following the last negative PCR results for the sole surviving case in line with recommendations by WHO and best practices. Ghana has therefore successfully interrupted the first Marburg virus disease outbreak and hereby declare that the outbreak is officially over. And I must say that Ghana is safe for all, both Ghanaians and everybody. We want to use the opportunity once again to acknowledge WHO, both technical and financial support, the US government through CDC, the UK government through the FCDO, all other partners, CSOs who supported us, the Wildlife Division played a key role, Ministry of Information as usual, you the media, and local communities and chiefs who were helping us and the general public. So I want to thank you. Um, thank you very much. Please subscribe to Boris TVGH.